What's up, Eagles Nation? Welcome to another week of NFL Football Week 11. Uh, going into Thanksgiving week, of course. Uh, so, you know, holidays right around the corner. And it's almost the end of 2020, thank thankfully, right? Um, not a lot's gone right this year, as we know. Uh, particularly here in, in uh, you know, with our beloved Eagles. And um, it's been a rough year. Um, look, they lose last week to the Giants. Um, you know, just a team they played just a few weeks ago. And they just, it's almost like they didn't quite, you know, they, they, they weren't quite, you know, ready for what the Giants were going to do, even though they saw them a few weeks ago. And the Giants didn't change anything. You know, the Giants came out and established that their offense, the first two drives, scoring touchdowns on the first two drives, a, not a very good offensive team. I mean, they're low-ranked in the league, and look, it, rankings are what they are, but, you know, not being able to stop them. And the Giants set the tone early. And look, the, the Giants earned that win. And in my mind, <laughs> I almost was around, you know. I, I, I tried making a video uh, the night of, and it just, you know, um, I figured, you know what, let me just sit, let me, let me step back, um, you know, put, collect my thoughts, go through the week and then, you know, do a bit a little later. Um, because honestly, it's, it's, it's been such a disappointing season and, and for the first time this year, you know, Carson Wentz doesn't turn the ball over, but yet, you know, the offense is flat. It's been flat all year and, and, and it goes to coaching and, um, you know, on both sides of the ball, it's been poor. And, you know, you all know my thoughts about Jim Johnson and that deep, and, their, and their defensive schemes and the fact that they put just about everything into the defensive line. They have the worst group of linebackers in the league. They, they, never, uh, they never seem to uh, care much about the linebacker position. The secondary is what it is. I mean, they go out, they get, you know, Darius Slay this offseason – they went out, they made other moves. Hargraves was brought in, other guys. You know, the biggest problem that, you know, and it has been talked about this week, um, and, and I 100% I agree with it, you look at the players that come here from other teams, and they're successful with other teams, which is why when they become free agents, they, they get big bucks, right? They come to the Eagles, and they're not very successful. Players who leave the Eagles go to other teams, like Sidney Jones, and are successful. And you can look at that and you can say it has to be coaching. And absolutely has to be coaching. How is it that you can have players that are so inept when they're here? And let's look, let's not let's not fool ourselves here. Nelson Aguilar was an absolute disaster the last week. He he had one really good year. And and thankfully, it was the year they won the Super Bowl, right? In fact, he led the Eagles in yards in the Super Bowl. Um, he couldn't catch a cold the last few years he was here. Awful. But again, it goes to coaching. you got to coach these guys up. It's about system. It's about coaching. And it's just all wrecked at this point. I mean, I even look at Carson Wentz. I mean, look, you put Carson Wentz on another team right now, he's probably playing better. You know, it's it's coaching, it's it's getting the best out of your players, looking what at what the players' strengths are and going with that. Carson Wentz is a better passer in the on the move, instead of out of the pocket, instead of in the pocket rather. He's a better he's a better statistically, he's a better passer accuracy wise and playmaking wise when he's outside of the pocket, yet they keep him in the pocket. I mean these plays when you 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 bring in Sidney Jones uh Sidney Jones when you bring in um Jalen Hurts it's the same play every time defenses aren't going to be fooled by this and and it's unfair it is unfair to you know uh uh you know to compare this team to teams like the Kansas City Chiefs you know and other teams who are just high powered offenses because, you know, they're better offensive minds that, that coach those teams. I mean, Eric Bieniemy is going to make a heck of a coach in this league. And he's done some great things with that, that Kansas City offense, working hand-in-hand -hand with Andy Reid, who's always been a good offensive, you know, minded coach. 
all right, the time management was a little bit of a problem when he was here. <laughs> and even even in, in some years with Kansas City. But he always knew offense, and he always knew how to draft guys, playmaking you know, players, and get the most. It's, it's one thing to draft those guys. And we complain, you know, night and day about how the Eagles should have drafted D.K. Metcalf. And even this season, Jefferson, right? And they could have had Alvin Kamara, and they could have had, you know, uh, uh, Cook, and you know, Cooks, rather, and, and all these different guys, all these different offensive, explosive players. But I got a question, even if they did get those guys, would they even look like they, they're looking on their respective teams? I mean, is DK Metcalf doing here what he's doing in Seattle? I don't know. With this coaching staff, are they going to get the most out of him like Seattle has? I mean, if Alvin Kamara was with the Eagles, would they even run the ball? I mean, they have Miles Sanders, who, who's a really good running back, and they just forget about the run. Last week they ran the ball a little bit, but then they get away from it. It's like Miles Sanders is having a good day. It's having a good game running the ball. And then we're going to have drives where we come out throwing the ball. Pass, 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 pass. Against an all, against a defense, rather, in the Giants who were horrendous against the run. Boston Scott had a big play. Long touchdown. I mean, he is a Giants killer. He scores against them every game. Um... You know, Corey Clement gets in the end zone for the first time this season against the Giants. And yet we're, we're still not using uh, uh, the, the, the running game as much as they should, particularly when you have a struggling quarterback. And again, it falls on coaching. Defense, the defensive problems this team has, falls on coaching. And it falls on the front office too. Howie is certainly not, you know, resolved from the issues of this team. And you look at the game last week, and I know we're a week removed from it now, just about. But you look at the problems that this team had, and, and it's the problems that they've had all year, for the most part. All year. Doug Peterson going for two every time. Why? You, you just get momentum after that Clement touchdown. You cut the lead to four. You kick the extra point. It's a three-point game. What are you doing going for two? It's the simple things that this team just doesn't do. And, you know, as a fan base, we can complain about Frank Reich not being here and going to Indiana. Listen, I've, I've said this over the years. I said this in previous videos years ago. When you're a successful franchise, teams are going to take the coaches from that franchise. It happens all the time. The Patriots, it happened every year, right? Kansas City now, people are going to pluck, like Eric Bieniemy's going to be plucked from there after this season, more than likely to be a head coach somewhere. Okay? It happens when you're a successful franchise, other teams who want to have success are going to go after and, and, and get those coaches. So the Eagles losing Frank Reich and DeFilippo and, and, and the coaching staff who were here the year, the year they won the Super Bowl is not surprising. And you're not going to move on from Doug Peterson a year after they went, you know, in the offseason after they win a Super Bowl. That's not going to happen. So some of the, you know, the OCs, the, the, the coaches under him get picked up by other teams because they want to have a chance to be a head coach in the league, and they deserve it. Frank Reich's doing a great job with the Colts. He, he deserved it. You know, good for him. The Eagles did him, him a service by letting him go and be a head coach to have success with another franchise. And they weren't going to make Frank Reich the head coach here a year in the offseason after the Eagles won their first Super Bowl in franchise history with Doug Peterson as the head coach. That wasn't going to happen. So, you know, as a fan base, you know, we can complain about things. But what, what, what happened with the Eagles happens to every team that has success. The difference is those teams are able to get other guys to come in and continue that success. Doug Peterson, I don't think he's a horrible coach. I think he's stubborn. Um, I think he thinks a little too much. Now, now he, he had success early as a head coach, right? Second year as a head coach, they win the Super Bowl. But Doug's one of those guys that needs some help. You know, someone in his ear, the, the whisperer, you know, like a Frank Reich was, like that coaching staff he had when they won the Super Bowl was, to kind of say, hey, Doug, you know, maybe this isn't the time to go for two. Or to be a little more creative with the offense. 
I mean, look at the things they do in Kansas City, for God's sakes. I mean, they're having, they had a play a few weeks ago where, where, where Mahomes is like, is, is, is under center. He kind of walks over one way. He's walking back. They spike the ball and he throws to a wide open receiver in the end zone for a touchdown. Great play call, but that's an, an, an inventive play call. And you see all these other teams do it week after week. The Eagles don't. The Eagles are playing like the, the most boringest brand of offense that you can find. And at times, I'd, I'd much rather watch a foreign artsy, artsy movie, you know, than, than watch the, 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 the Eagles' uh, 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 offense. It's just lackluster. It's unimaginative. It's, it's predictable. The last few years, how many times we heard the defenses playing the Eagles? Oh, yeah, we knew what they were going to do. And it falls on coaching. It falls on the players. The players have to make plays. But it falls on the coaching. Well, why are they not being more creative? And it falls on the front office, too. Okay, if you lose guys like Frank Reich, you got to replace them. They have all these different guys in, 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 in the room. It's like they have a whole party in there of different guys that they brought in this offseason, but it hasn't been effective at all. And I understand it's been a year where you had a crazy offseason with the COVID in it, but you look at these other teams, it hasn't affected them. It hasn't affected them. Chiefs are still doing their thing. The Steelers are perfect. They're undefeated. For, for all the, the, the players the Patriots don't have, they're starting to win some games with a new co uh, quarterback there in Cam Newton. Beat the Ravens last week. But again, it, it, it falls on coaching. The players have to make plays. That's absolutely 100%. What the play call is, the players have to make those plays. And unfortunately, the Eagles just haven't been able to do it more times than not this season. But it falls on the coaching staff. And this, this season, more than ever, you can see it just isn't it just isn't working. And again, the, the biggest proof is those players who left here and went on to have success on other teams. Nelson Aguilar is making catches now. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> he was dropping everything when he was here in Oakland. He's making catches with three guys on him. Or, or I'm sorry, Las Vegas, rather. He's making catches with three guys on him, for God's sakes. You have Sidney Jones looking like, a, looking like a pro bowler with the Jaguars. Where was that? And this defensive line, which is supposed to be the strength of the team. I mean, Hargraves was a good player in Pittsburgh. He comes here, he, he stinks. He can hardly even touch the quarterback. Or the running back, for that matter. When they when when they run the ball, like last week, Jarwin all over them. Daniel Jones running for a long for a thirty plus yard touchdown on the first drive. I mean, yeah, I mean, you didn't think that they were going to do that. It's like I know they're coming off a bye, but what what in the hell? And and yeah, they're coming off a bye. They're now what one and four. Off of a bye? I mean, that, that, that's, that's preparation. That's not having your team ready. That falls again on the coaching staff, the failure that this coaching staff has had game after game. And I don't know, you know, after this season, what's going I mean, obviously, I think Jim Schwartz is going to be gone, and rightfully so. Um, but now they got to replace him. you got to get a better defensive coordinator in here. I think they should get a, an, an O.C., Someone who can, you know, work hand in hand with Doug so the play calling's a little better and more creative, hopefully. And I don't know who that is. It should have been Deuce Staley, I think, instead of keeping him as running back coach or, uh, you know, um, whatever his role is now, assistant to Doug or whatever it is now. <laughs> I mean, look, the, and, and they were talking about today on the radio, and it's 100% true. The one constant with this team over the years is the running backs have played good. That core, that group has been the most successful part of the offense, and that's Deuce's control. Deuce is doing his job really well. I mean, look, he, he, he's been the basically the coach MVP of this team. Because that unit is still very good. They, they play at a high level, and they're you know, week to week playing at a high level. Now they have to run the ball a little more. But when they have their opportunities, they're making the most of it. And they're all contributing, whether it's Sanders or, or um, Boston Scott or Clements, or now they bring back Jordan Howard. 
I'm sure he'll produce a bit now. They're well coached, but the rest of this offense, no. Not at all. I mean, Carson Wentz has, has regressed. He was an MVP candidate just a few years ago. He's regressed. That's on coaching. That's on the player, too. Carson's not resolved, but it's on coaching. Listen, I'm not saying anything in this video that we we, we don't know we we don't already know here in Eagles Nation. It's been it's it's just it, it, every every game it just seems to be getting worse and worse. And and I think that that game against the Giants a week ago was at this point the low point. And yes, the Giants finally beat the Eagles, so I guess they won their Super Bowl this year. <laughs> I mean, I, look, I was at the point last week where I'm like, you know what, the Giants can just win this horrible division. I'd rather have the draft picks. I'd rather not, you know, go through a, you know, basically be an NFL purgatory, basically. So, okay, we, we win a bad division, go to the playoffs, maybe to play like the Cardinals or the, the Saints or whoever it would be and lose that game and, you know, have a mid-first round pick. And, you know, because the Eagles don't generally draft very well, what's it going to matter? But then I'm thinking, well, if we even we get a top five pick, they don't draft well. Or even, we don't even know if they draft well. Listen, this is the thing. This is the real problem. We don't even know if these players who they draft could be better if they were coached better. So this is this is the thing that's going to have to go hand in. Yeah, they have to hit on the drafts, but they got to coach these guys. The coaching has to be better for this team to succeed going forward. And I don't know if it will be. I have no idea what, what this... You know, what the offseason is going to bring, obviously, there'll be some more coaches. I don't think Doug's going to be fired. I mean, unless they just lose out the rest of the way. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard for them to fire him just coming off a few years after a Super Bowl win. I think they will try to get another offensive coordinator in here. There'll be a different defensive coordinator, different defensive scheme, hopefully one that, that values the linebacker position. That would be nice. But it has to go hand in hand. Look, you can draft whoever you want. You have to coach these guys. And the coaching has to be better. Absolutely has to be better. Because we can sit here and bang our head on against the wall all day and say who they could have drafted. Oh, why did they draft this guy? And they could have had that guy. The bottom line is it doesn't matter who they draft. If you're not coaching them the way they should be coached, it doesn't matter who you draft or who you don't draft. Because we can look at the players all we want on those other teams. Guess what? Those are different coaches on those other teams. They're, they're coaching those players better. And enough of this stupid play where you have Jalen Hurts come on the field and Carson Wentz out fooling nobody as a wide receiver. And Jalen Hurts is running for like two yards. Enough of that play. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of seeing it, but it's like they, they don't know how to... They don't know what else to do with the guy. It's like, though, well, we drafted him in the second round. We have to put him out there, and this is the play we're going to... He's not Taysom Hill. It's frustrating because we all want to see this team play better. And there's players on this team that are capable of playing better if they were just coached better. And even, in, even to a point, the coaches can be better. We've seen them be better in the past. We've seen Doug Peterson be a better coach in the past when he had some help, too. The guy's not inept. But it has to be better. And again, it falls on the front office after this season to help, to, to get the right pieces in place. And I know the season still has to be has has to be done, and it's going to be another weird year with the COVID and everything. But, I mean, look what the Sixers have done, for God's sakes. I mean, talk about a complete turnaround. Not only do they get another head coach, but they get all these different coaches. I mean, they really put together a hell of a staff. <laughs> and and it has to it has to work, right? But, look, they're, they're going to I, – I fully believe that Doc Rivers and his staff – are going to get the most out of the the players that that Brett Brown couldn't, and and I look forward to the what the, what the Sixers are, are 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 going to bring to the table. Am I expecting a Larry O'Brien this season? Probably not, but I do think they'll be better. 
And I think that those players will be better coached. And you know what? That makes all the difference. Look at the Flyers last season. This made pretty much the same team as it was the previous years. The difference was coaching. They got better coaching. Knew how better to use those players. Yeah, I mean, look, they didn't win the cup. Can't expect that in one, particularly this year with the with the with the, you know, the the the, um, the interrupted season that they had. But they were one of the best teams in the league before that that break happened. And then you know they won around for the first time in a long time in the, in the bubble. I mean, tough loss in seven games to the to the Islanders, but that team played better. You saw it from day one. Coaching. The Sixers will be a better team, in my opinion. Made some nice moves. Still got a few more moves to make to strengthen the bench and whatnot. But I do believe they'll be a better team because of coaching. And the same thing has to be done with the Eagles. Because unless that changes, we're going to have the same thing over and over again. It's going to be like Groundhog's Day. They they play the Browns tomorrow. And the Browns, listen, the Browns have, have their own share of issues. But they're a very good running offense. And the Eagles have had trouble <laughs> stopping the run. That's basically all the, all the Browns do is run the ball. So unless the Eagles can stop that, it's going to be a tough game. Bad weather apparently in Cleveland tomorrow, so we'll see. The way I feel is this is my this is like the last stand tomorrow, and 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 uh, uh, it was talked about today. Uh, uh, Ray Didger brought up the, uh, the 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 Bills game last no excuse me the Bills game last season when all hope looked lost and they won a game. No one thought they were they were going to win in Buffalo last season, a windy Buffalo, you know, and and you know that game kind of saved the season, and we'll see tomorrow. I mean, it, it's still a pathetic division. What are they now? Three, five, and one, and they're still in first place. I mean, my God. But yeah, I mean, they're still in first place in a crap division. It's still a winnable division. But we'll see if they win the game tomorrow. They still, hey, look, okay, it's still a rough schedule coming up. Seattle, the week after that, Monday Night Football. I mean, Seattle's defense is a little shaky, but I mean, our offense is very shaky. <laughs> So I don't know if it's going to matter. And and they they can't beat Seattle since Doug, Doug's been the coach and Carson's been here, right? They just Seattle beats them all the time. So we'll see. Got some tough games. We'll see if Breeze is in there when they play the Saints or not. And, you know, we'll see. I mean, look, I don't look at games too far ahead. I look at the game at hand. Because if you just keep looking ahead, that's going to do no good because who knows what these teams are going to be when you play them, particularly this season. But who knows what the Eagles are going to be when we play them. But it has to be better. Will it be better? We're gonna we're gonna have to wait and see. I don't know. I, I don't feel overly confident at this point that it can get that they can turn it around. But I, I've said this. I mean, who knows? They they the one thing I will say for them, and I will say for Doug, and I will say for for this team is they've been resilient over the years. That when when all hope looks lost, they somehow are able to pull it together and and go on a run and make the playoffs and you know win you know. They've been able to do that in the past. So can I say that there's no way they'll do that this season? No. It's still a piss-poor division. All the teams in the division have their own share of problems. The Giants look like they're getting a little better, but they have problems of their own. So, I mean, it, it's – it's look, I mean, it, it was a tough one last week, but the Eagles somehow beat Cleveland tomorrow, and, and who, who knows? You know, who knows? So we'll take it week to week. Right now, it, seems, it, it looks horrible, <laughs> putting it mildly, but we'll see. I, I, this is, like I said, man, this is the last stand. I, I'm, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to say they have a shot to win this game tomorrow. We'll see. I mean, they're angry. They, they've heard it all this week, how horrible they are. They've had to deal with it, and just like a year ago before they played Buffalo, I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe this type of thing gets the best out of them. Maybe this is the type of thing they need because they seem to do this every year. Um, but we'll see. You know, we'll see how this game goes tomorrow. I don't know. I, 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 I you know, it's hard to feel confident at all <laughs> with this team. But for some reason, I just, I, I just feel they're going to win tomorrow. I, I don't know why, but I just, I, I can't give you reasons. I can't, you know, X and O it. But I just, I don't know. I feel like this is going to be a win. I feel like this is going to be, be a win, so we'll see. Um, but
But anyhow, let's get to the to the last segment here, the Festive Four, the weekly Festive Four. Hey, the one thing that's been consistent, I mean, you know, look, Festive sitting up a little, a little taller this season because Festive. Again, last week went three and one. Those Seahawks were the only one that didn't want to cooperate last week. So this week's festive four going into this week. Oh, 23 and nine. Festive is challenging anyone from NFL Network to take on Festive in the picks. Okay, because Festive's just, this is just. <laughs> you know, the playmaker doesn't want any of Festive. I'll tell you that. You know, they have that lone wolf. I mean, you know, Festive's the lone fox, okay? <laughs> it's taking care of business with the pigs. So for this week's Festive Four, we're going to start off Festive, and it's dangerous because you, you, you pick a team with a long winning streak. Sometimes that's a little dangerous. But Festive feels that the Steelers will remain undefeated to go to 10-0 and 0, uh, um, with a win over the Jacksonville Jaguars. Festive also likes Baltimore to rebound, and this is a tough game, Baltimore-Tennessee, but Festive likes Baltimore in a revenge factor from the playoffs last season to, to, to beat uh, Tennessee. Uh, Festive likes New England to keep the winning ways going for them uh, against Houston, and to round it off, Festive likes Indianapolis over Green Bay. A little bit of an upset, but Indianapolis is playing, playing pretty good. The Frank Reich, Indianapolis Colts, that defense is not getting any talk they're very good, and Festive likes them to take on discount double check and get a win there against the Packers. So in in uh, in repeat here, pe uh, Festive for the Festive Four likes Pittsburgh to remain undefeated against Jacksonville, likes Baltimore over Tennessee, New England over Houston, and finally the Indianapolis Colts over the Cheeseheads. That is the Festive Four for this week 11, and I know we're going into Thanksgiving week, so I want to end the video right now by saying happy Thanksgiving to those who celebrate Thanksgiving here in the States. We could have some international viewers too, so not everyone's celebrating Thanksgiving this coming week, but happy Thanksgiving to all of you who are in, in, in the United States. Um, happy start to the holiday season, and boy, we need it, don't we? It's been a crazy year. We're all looking forward to 2021. But we still have we still have some weeks to go. <laughs> a little over a month to go. But uh, ha have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And um, you all take care. Stay safe. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you already haven't done so. Once you do so, hit the bell icon so you'll be alerted to vids by more future vids by yours truly. And make sure you leave that like. Look, this this year has been that. Nah particularly here in, 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 in with football here in Philly. So leave that like, leave that like, and, and feel free to leave comments below. What do you think about the game tomorrow? Do you think the Eagles have a shot um, or not? <laughs> leave some comments below if you feel, if you feel that, that if, if you feel you want to do so, it's always welcome. All right, everyone, take care. Stay safe out there. Mask up, everyone. Don't, we're not wearing masks right now because we're in, indoors. We're social distancing, though, so... <laughs> But uh, mask up, everyone, and you all stay safe. Take care. Go, birds! Please, God, and uh, I'll see you after the game at some point.